Hi guys! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I really don't have anything planned to film, but I really wanted to film because I miss being on camera and I haven't filmed. Look, I can't. I can't stop because look at my tongue ring. Um, I don't know. I just really miss being on camera. I'm really fucked up on caffeine right now. And what's better than being fucked up on caffeine and screaming at your camera? Nothing's better for me at least. I just got off the phone with my mom because I have to call her about seven times a day. Yeah. And then I called my dad and he didn't answer. So dad, when you see this, uh, you, you, you could have prevented this. So because I couldn't talk to anyone, I decided to talk to myself. Um, I, like I said, I don't have anything that I want to film, but I just really wanted to do it. So what's new? I'm in Connecticut again. I went back home for like two weeks and then I came back because I fucking hate it there. Plus, everyone from my high school is, like, back from college, so it's kind of, like, I don't want to see any of those fucking losers. <laughs> uh. So wifey. I have motivation to film. I just don't know what to film. Like, I have no video ideas. I have no content ideas. I look so flat-chested. I look like I went- I look like I went to the titty shop. I'm trying to say this in a way that the universe will give it to me. Okay, when I get famous, I will get rich and I will get a breast reduction. A little OOTD outfit of the day. I look like shit. Uh-uh. Oh my god, there's a hole. Me trying to make my ass look better than it does. Part 64. Ooh! Hey guys, it's Vlog Squad. No. No. Neighbor? Da Vinci? <laughs> As I say, I'm not on drugs. Like me straight up lying to you. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Who's daddy? I'm daddy. I'm daddy. I'm daddy, I'm wifey, I'm all of the above. I just turned this into like ASMR real quick. ASMR, watch me eat. Aw. Uh. Mmm. Like no shade to like the ASMR YouTubers, but like low key shade. Do the ASMR YouTubers. So much has happened. Should I do a recap video? Like my 2020 recap? Would you guys be into that? I could put like clips and like I could do like some tea spilling. I can get really personal in my 2020 recap if you'd want. It's better to have love for everyone than to have hate for anyone. Um I love you. And I'll see you soon. Maybe the next time I see you, it'll be my 2020 recap with all of my tea. Who knows? So I said in the first clip that the next time you see me, I will maybe doing my 2020 recap and spilling some tea. And obviously that is not true because I'm literally filming 20 minutes, less than 20 minutes after that first clip. So I am spilling tea, but not for my 2020 recap. Story time tea. This is a story of me breaking up with my psychotic ex-boyfriend. And I'm not even just saying he's psychotic for the clickbait. Like, he actually is psychotic. So basically, okay, we were together for... For like almost two years we were together. How fucking ridiculous is that? But really, and like I ignored... So many... Red flags and I was kind of a complete idiot and like was like oh like that's fine like oh yeah like 
Like, this is totally normal. Like, you should be calling me 25 times a day. <laughs> That's fine. So let me just give you a little insight. Um, we met at what was my job at the time. I was working as like a camp, not a camp counselor, but like we worked at my, like the community college where I am from, I'm not here in Connecticut, obviously, but like in New York, um, I was working at like a community college over the summer and I met him and, uh, then it was kind of just downhill from there. Then we broke up actually for a little while and then we started dating again, which is actually probably, that is the first red flag that I ignored. And I think that this is a little story time, but also a little like personal realization of like, what the fuck were you doing? You literally were not with him. You had the chance to get out of there. And then you went back. So whatever. So after we broke up, we got back together on Christmas. How cute. Uh, um, but yeah. So we started dating on Christmas 2018. It had to be, right? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what year, to be honest, because like December is like the last month and that's always hard for me. <laughs> and I, it was honestly like so good, of course, for the first like three, four months. It's always good. It's literally called the honeymoon phase. But whatever. So it was fine, right? It was all good. Like, it was fun. Like, fun dates. Good times. Whatever. He was, like, really, like, my family. Even though I really don't even like my family. We're really cool with him. But that's... My my shitty family is, like, a different story time. But whatever. So they liked him. And it was, like, okay, cool. Like, everyone was going to go along. And it was honestly probably a really good time in my life. For, like, those first four months. Like, I was, like... I'm not gonna lie and say I wasn't genuinely happy with my overall situation. Like I had good friends, I had a good boyfriend, my family and I were like on good terms for the most part. Um, and then to be honest, I don't even know what it was, but then we just went to shit. And like we were arguing a lot and like I'm, we're literally young as fuck. And I don't know why I was like not seeing that. Like, I don't have to be dating anyone, let alone a fucking loser, psychopath. But I was like, you know what? No, like, I, I want it to work. I need it to work. Oh. Like, I definitely didn't have the confidence that I have now. And so that kind of just, like, fed my confidence. Because, like, obviously when you're dating someone, like, usually it's good for your confidence and, like, good for everything like that. Like, you feel better about yourself because, like, there's literally someone telling you all the time that you're pretty. But yeah, besides that, besides the compliments, there was so much like, like just blows to like me as a person. Like obviously you have seen enough of my videos to know that like I'm a very outspoken, very bold, very like crazy person, you know? Like it's not, like I literally act like that in real life. Like it's not just for the camera. I, I like that. I do that no matter who I'm speaking to like I I'm just so like exactly how I am on camera is exactly how I am IRL and While I was with him. I literally like I just was not My full self, but I never saw it that way Which really sucks especially considering I was so young But I guess it's a good thing because like I I learned from it then before waiting until I was like 25 and being like I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing, but like instead I was doing that at like 16. There were like a bunch of times where I thought we were gonna break up and I was actually more scared to break, like to be broken up than to continue dealing with the situation. Not scared since he was like, he was gonna kill me, but just scared to like not be with him. And now it's like, ew, that's actually repulsing. I would rather die right now. So like one very specific incident was there was like a scene like, for my high school, there was like a senior event and he was like, oh, like, like he was so mad that I was going. For no reason, like you just don't want me to go. And I literally remember saying that, like you just don't want me to go, why? Like there's literally no reason. And he, like everything was always just like very like that or him, like this or him. And like my dumb ass every time almost chose him and like dude for what it's not even that good yeah like two years go by of me like dealing with this shit and then finally i was like 
like I just got so fed up with it and like it was always like oh like don't wear this don't be friends with them like for the longest time I literally quite literally wasn't allowed to have male friends that's so weird that's so weird he literally even had a problem with like like my gay male friends because they weren't like he refused to believe that they were gay and he low-key is actually like low-key homophobic and i know that's like an outrageous claim to make about someone but it 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 is true he's definitely one of those guys that says they're not homophobic but also like is uncomfortable around gay people he like refused to believe that my gay friends were gay and he thought he thought that like like I wanted to hook up with like several of my female friends, but I don't want to hook up with my friends. His self esteem is just so low, and like, like poor self image, and like all of the things that like add up to making you a crazy obsessive controlling person. Like he's got every single one. Like mommy issues out the hoo ha, daddy issues out the hoo ha, and it's like same. But I handle myself so well. Uh, so what the fuck. I honestly, I never thought that I would be like on here telling the story time, but I needed something to film and I feel like this is so good to like talk about. Like something traumatic that changed my life, check. Ah, my psycho ex, check. Ah. Alex told me, cause I texted her and I was like, I don't know, ah, I don't know what to film. And then of course, like everything else, she solved my problems for me. <laughs> cause I can't think by myself. I need assistance clearly as I'm going off the track i'm like totally sidetracked i was supposed to be talking about my ex and now i'm talking about alex who was one of the people that he said i wanted to hook up with um me and alex have been friends since the beginning of high school if i wanted to hook up with her i think it would have happened already um yeah we literally lived together that's weird i'm friends i take that back actually Okay, that's that's another story time act like the day all right so there was a senior what am i talking about the senior thing he didn't want me to go and i thought we were gonna break up because i went anyway and he said that if i go he was gonna break like we were gonna be done and i went anyway and i was so like stressed out like to talk to him after but i didn't care and we actually didn't break up after that after that then there was like there was like a picture that I posted and it was like a huge thing. Like, why the fuck would you post that? Oh my God. Uh, I like. And then the actual, like, like the day that I broke up with him was like a week or two after my 18th birthday. And I remember I didn't even talk to him all like on my birthday really until like, like at night. Like, he said happy birthday to me, obviously. But, like, I kind of didn't talk to him for, like, the whole day. And But I had a really shitty birthday. But not because of him. Just because of, like, my family, really. But, that again, that's another story time. Um, But, yeah. So, yeah. So, on my birthday. I mean, after my birthday. I was at my friend Johnny's house. You know Johnny. And he was, like, like calling me non-stop. Non-fucking-stop. And I literally, I turned my like vibration off and I turned like my phone on like do not, not do not disturb, but like basically like I was seeing his calls go through and I was just ignoring them and ignoring them and ignoring them because that's so fucking annoying. And I went into the bathroom at Johnny's house and I answered his call and I was like, what? And then he was like, he just started yelling and I was like, literally, if you call me again, we're done. Like call me again and we're actually done. Like I'm, uh, call me again and like we're done we're not together i'm not your girlfriend like no like literally either let me enjoy my night and we can talk about it at, like a different time or call me again and i'm literally not your girl anymore and then he i hung up and then he called me back and then i answered him and i said we're done and this was all in johnny's bathroom <laughs> and <laughs> and i yeah, so he called me back and I said that we're done and then I blocked him like that, like I blocked him and then I unblocked him like the following day and he was like, oh, like what the fuck? And he, I guess, thought that like because so many times had passed like that where it was like a we're gonna break up kind of like threat argument thing that like he thought it was like not serious but I actually was very much inside done. Like I was 
mentally broken up with him about a month before that. So when I said it, I genuinely fucking meant it. And then he like, I guess it was taken aback. And there was all of those like, oh, I'm going to kill myself, uh, all that shit. And at that point, I didn't even care anymore. I'll be so straight up. I really didn't care anymore. Yeah, so that's that. So moral of the story, I broke up with my psychotic ex in Johnny Sakos' bathroom. <laughs> I love him. That's my soul sister. Alex, thank you for the idea. Uh, yeah, that's my my tea time. That's my story time. Like, I don't want you guys to think that like I'm like not doing well or like I have like, like I'm sad. I really did feel like such a relief, like so much weight off of my chest. And like, I just felt so happy and like relaxed and like able to do what I wanted which was literally not even anything extreme. I literally just wanted to be happy. And I am, I'm literally thriving AF. I love it. I love being on my own, being free to do like whatever I want, which is like kind of crazy to think about the fact that I couldn't, but that's why I appreciate it so much more now. And if that's what it took, if it took like one, like like controlling piece of shit to like get me to realize that I thrive by myself and that's what the fuck it took and I'm happy that it did and that's why I never really judge people on their relationships because like I literally put up with bullshit for two years so who am I to judge like what anyone else is doing because like I don't know how they're feeling they could be feeling how I felt after year one you know uh yeah so moral of the story don't date my ex because he's psychotic um and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I feel really good. I feel very fun, very fresh. And I'm happy we got to have a little story time. I haven't had a, I haven't had a story time, like a just story time dedicated video since the scary gas station story where I told that in my family's house that I no longer live in. So that's been a fat man. It's been like a Kim K ass man. <laughs> Yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends, yada, 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 get me famous, etc, etc. Uh, and I'll see you soon. It's better to have love for everyone than to have hate for anyone. I love you all.